Hello everyone. Now that I have covered my top five worst movies of 2017, now get to talk about my top 10 best movies of 2017. Just some rules to keep in mind. One, I have not seen every single movie that came out this year. I've heard great things about Lady Bird, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Shape of Water. Didn't see them. Either I was too busy or they just weren't playing. Second, this is all my opinion. These are movies that I can imagine myself watching more based on rewatchability or how much I love them. Three, please don't worry about the ratings I gave some of these films in this review. Some of them I gave four and a half stars, might be above five out of five stars, and four out of five stars, that one's on the list. Either I just thought about the film more and appreciated it more and I loved it, or opinions change over time. All right, let's get started. I have five honorable mentions, gonna get to those right now. Get out. I was worried about the hype going into this film. I was worried it's gonna be overhyped, wouldn't like it as much as other people. Luckily, I ended up loving this movie. It's funny at times, intense, and so creepy. And I can't wait to see what Jordan Peele does next as a writer and director. If he plans on doing another horror movie, I will be there. Wonder Woman, easily the best film in the DCEU. Gal Gadot is phenomenal as Wonder Woman. Chris Pine is great. The action, the music, the effects are amazing. Wonder, such a pleasant surprise. Jacob Tremblay is fantastic in this movie. It's also a very touching film. Spider-Man Homecoming, one of the best Spider-Man films since Spider-Man 2. It's funny, exciting. Tom Holland is fantastic as Spider-Man. I can't wait to see more of him. And Michael Keane was great as the Vulture. And finally, Split, M. Night Shyamalan's big comeback. And I was so happy to see a great Shyamalan movie and one that's very suspenseful and a terrific performance from James McAvoy. Now I got those honorable mentions out of the way. Let's begin the top 10 list. Starting off the list was for me the best horror movie of the year, It. Not only was It a great horror movie, a great coming of age film, but a great film in general. The child actors are terrific, the scares worked well, and most of it is due to Bill Skarsgård's absolutely terrifying performance as Pennywise. I can't wait for IT Chapter 2 in 2019. This film comes out on Blu-ray in January, definitely pick it up, it's worth watching. Number 9 was a film I actually got to see today before making this top 10 list, and boy I'm glad I did. The Disaster Artist. James Franco made hardcore fans of the room like me very proud and you can definitely tell he was very passionate about this project and he showed it. And his performance as Tommy Wiseau is Oscar worthy. His voice, his mannerisms, and he completely disappeared in this role to the point where I actually forgot that was James Franco. I felt like I was looking at the real Tommy Wiseau. This is not only a very funny film, it's also not afraid to get dramatic when it needs to be and the dramatic moments worked very well. It's funny, dramatic at times. I highly recommend The Disaster Artist, especially if you're a fan of The Room. Your day may have Lisa. Number eight is possibly the most divisive film on the list and that is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Upon thinking about this movie over time, I can't admit there are some a couple problems here and there. Mostly the casino scene didn't really need to be that long and when Rose kissed Finn, yeah, that was very abrupt and felt out of place. But for everything else, as a fan of Star Wars and good movies, I was satisfied with what I got. An intense, exciting, beautifully shot, just some of the best shots in any Star Wars movie since The Empire Strikes Back. It's also the riskiest and unpredictable Star Wars film with so many twists and turns, did not see them coming, had my jaw dropped. Everyone cast does a fantastic job from the old cast, Mark Hamill in particular. He gives an Oscar worthy performance and Carrie Fisher, rest in peace. It's a great final film for Carrie Fisher and everyone new cast from Force Awakens was great. Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Adam Driver, Oscar Isaac, whoever played Rose, they all did a great job. I cannot wait for episode 9 and hopefully J.J. Abrams will conclude this trilogy with a bang. Number 7 was one of the most entertaining movies of the year 
and the movie I just had a huge smile on my face Thor Ragnarok finally a great Thor movie and without a doubt the best one it's hilarious and immensely entertaining I was having such a good time with this movie everyone cast knocked it out of the park everyone cast was so good that I can't pick a specific standout because everyone cast was doing such a good job from Chris Hemsworth, Tom Hiddleston, Tessa Thompson, Mark Ruffalo, Jeff Goldblum, Kate Blanchett, Taika Waititi as Korg. I love Korg. He is awesome. One of my favorite MCU characters now. And I am so happy to finally see a great Thor movie. Coming in at number 6, 2017 wasn't the most memorable year of animation. And yet, this film was easily... The King of Animation of 2017, Disney Pixar's Coco. Coco is yet another hit for Pixar. It's funny, heartfelt, charming, and emotional. A film that both kids and adults will enjoy, and not only entertaining, but it will teach them important morals about family and the consequences of trying to accomplish your dream. And also some great songs in this movie too, especially Remember Me, which I have a feeling will get an Oscar nomination for Best Original Song. It might happen. Coco is one of my top 10 favorite Pixar movies right now. I adored it. Now we get to the top 5. At number 5 was a fantastic conclusion to a fantastic trilogy, War for the Planet of the Apes. Out of all the Planet of the Apes prequels, Rise, Dawn, and Now War. This one was the most intense, dramatic, and emotionally powerful out of all of them. From the outstanding visuals, how they made these apes look realistic is just amazing how they pulled it off in all three of these movies. Andy Serkis is once again phenomenal as Caesar. How, how has he not gotten an Oscar nomination yet for his terrific motion capture work? He deserves it in this movie. And this is his best performance as Caesar, maybe of his entire career. It just might be. The second time I watched this movie on Blu-ray, I cried at the end. Just, I was bawling by the end of this movie. Just, it was an emotionally satisfying ending. Woody Harrelson was a great villain. He wasn't just evil just because and hating apes because he hates them. He had a tragic backstory that makes you understand his character. Steve Zahn as Bad Ape was a great comic relief. And the ending was one of the best endings of 2017. Coming in at number four was in my opinion, the most entertaining movie of 2017 Baby Driver. If I could use one word to describe Baby Driver, it would be awesome. Baby Driver is freaking awesome. Edgar Wright's directing and editing is simply filmmaking perfection. The amazing action along with the great practical effects used in the action scenes were really great. Likeable protagonist, memorable characters, cute romance, funny moments, and also that awesome soundtrack with songs I listened to over and over again, and that's not the only good thing about it. And I liked how they made the soundtrack a character of its own and moved the story along. I love that. Edgar Wright, please, don't stop making movies. Please don't retire from filmmaking. I can't wait to see what you do next, and I will be there. No matter what it is, I will be there. Number three. After processing this movie, Two months after I saw it, I can safely confirm that Blade Runner 2049 is a sci-fi masterpiece. The visuals of this 2049 setting is phenomenal and it is jaw-dropping to look at. Pretty much everything in the technical aspect filmmaking for this movie was flawless. From the music, the visuals, the production design, cinematography in particular. If Roger Deakins does not win his long-awaited Best Cinematography Oscar, I might give up on the Oscars. If he's not nominated or if he doesn't win next year, I'm going to give up on the Oscars. Just know. 
because this cinematography is absolutely breathtaking. It was some of the best cinematography I possibly have ever seen in my entire life. It just had me in complete awe. Not only did Denis Villeneuve direct this film masterfully, but he takes themes of the predecessor, which this film vastly improves on in every way, but he takes the themes of the predecessor and takes them in interesting directions by giving us an engaging story. Ryan Gosling is great. Harrison Ford gives one of his best performances. Everyone cast does a great job. It is a very long movie. It's two hours and 43 minutes, which it's very, very long, moves at a very slow pace. But since this film is so beautifully shot, well acted, and has such an engaging story, you can almost forgive the film for its long runtime because every shot in this film was amazing to look at. Coming in at number two was without a doubt the best comic book movie of 2017, Logan. Logan is not only a perfect superhero movie, which it is, but a perfect film in general. It was everything I wanted a Wolverine movie to be. It was nothing in this film was held back. How brutal, bloody, and violent it was. It just goes for it. Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart give their best performances as both Wolverine and Professor Xavier in these films. And the past X-Men films to see them as these powerful characters, whether it was their mind or their bodies, and to see them like this in this movie, was heartbreaking. I also want to mention Daphne Keene who was a newcomer as X-23 or Laura was amazing and there were many scenes in this film where I was like oh whoa and this was the film out of all the films 2017 this was the one that made me cry the hardest and the second time I watched this movie on Blu-ray I was crying so hard after watching this movie just tears flowing down my face just after watching this movie it might be my favorite ending of 2017 so satisfying and Hugh Jackman's final performance as Wolverine went out with a bang and now it's time for my number one favorite film of 2017 what could it be well let me tell you my number one favorite film 2017 is Dunkirk Christopher Nolan continues to be one of my favorite filmmakers working right now and with his new movie Dunkirk he did not disappoint one bit right after the opening title this film became an intense and heart pounding masterpiece. It's one of the best war films ever made up there with Saving Private Ryan. Pretty much every aspect of filmmaking in the Dunkirk was perfection. From the sound design, the practical effects, the music, well acted by everyone. Tom Hardy, Mark Rylance, Kenneth Branagh, Cillian Murphy, and even Harry Styles, pretty good actor. Even though this film has little to no character development or backstories, that is not the point of the movie. It's supposed to be an immersive experience into this event, and that's what it was, and Christopher Nolan accomplished that masterfully. And with all these reasons, Dunkirk is my favorite movie of 2017. Whew. And that's it. Those, that was my list the top 10 movies 2017 and what are you guys favorite films of 2017 top 5 top 10 let me know below also let me know if you agree disagree with my picks let me know below make sure to like this video leave a comment and subscribe if you're new here it really means a lot i'm jack benner and look forward to another movie review and i will see you all in 2018